Hello and welcome. This is a video I'm preparing after our lecture, um, our second lecture on Friday morning to kind of reiterate some details from class on Wednesday since I wasn't able to record that first lecture. Um, so I just wanted to go back through some of the introductory uh, slides here and um, kind of introduce the class to anybody who has joined um, my Chem 1210 class since our lecture on Wednesday or for anybody who wasn't able to make it the lecture. I'm gonna try to record most lectures I've had some technology issues, so I'll at least be recording them this way, if not through Zoom as we proceed through the class. Today, I'm just gonna go through some slides. During lecture, I was showing a lot of features of Carmen. It's gonna be hard for me to record that within this video. Uh, so I think the, uh, the thing I'll say about Carmen for today, just for this video, is hopefully you've had a chance to get into Carmen. Usually if you sign up or change classes the night that you sign up and change classes that evening, usually around midnight to 4 a.m. you get added to Carmen and your access is activated. Um, just in case you haven't been, been able to get into Carmen, that might be the holdup. You can ask your advisor if it's been more than a day or so and you're still not into Carmen, uh, but you should be automatically loaded. Once you're into Carmen, there is a link in our homepage that says start a term tasks. And if you click that link, there's a bunch of sub links within it that are useful. Uh, one for setting up the textbook, one for getting help if you have issues setting up your textbook, and a variety of other uh, links that you can check out. There's a few links if you go back to the main um, homepage. There's like links to um, the lecture pages that give you access to these slides that I'll be lecturing from today. And also give you access to like recitation activities. Eventually when we finish activities, I'll post keys there. And there's also like a daily quiz page for practice quizzes um, that you can do that aren't required for credit, but just PDF copies of quizzes that you can do throughout the course. So you can check those out if you wish. And there's a slide or two that'll talk about those here uh, within our discussion for this video. So just a basic course introduction, a little bit of information about the syllabus, but again, just discussing the information I had on slides. There's no chapter one intro topics that are part of lecture. That, you know. So on Wednesday, we did not get to any chapter one discussion. So we started fresh on Friday. This, this morning's lecture began at the, at the, in, the beginning of chapter one. Okay, so just um, some anticipated uh, questions, how to set up your e-text and online homework access. Again, um, go to the front page of Carmen. You're actually gonna look for the start of term tasks and then within that link, you'll find the register your, for the online homework information page. There's a code within a file that you need to copy and paste as you're setting up your access. The payment for the book is processed through your student uh, account. It's about 50 bucks for the semester. Um, how to get access to these slides? If you want to follow the slides that I'm lecturing with here, there's a page that has these slides, and as we go through the other chapters, they'll be posted as well. Usually, I, I post um, an entire chapter uh, together um, a day or so before we begin that particular chapter in class. Um, do labs recitation meet this week? They do meet this week, um, starting Tuesday. Uh, labs began to meet. Recitation attendance didn't begin until Thursday for credit. There was a Tuesday recitation. If you had recitation on Tuesday, you may have met, but it was not for credit. If you signed up late and you missed lab, look through the lab announcements, look through the lab syllabus, syllabus and see what you need to do um, to um, make sure that you get squared away for the lab part of the class. And something worth mentioning right now is that the individual lecturers for the class like me uh, I'm in charge of the lectures, obviously, the online homework, and the recitations, and I also um, help prepare you for exams, and we'll have some review materials that we talk about as it relates to exams. All your questions about lab are gonna be best suited for your lab TA and or your lab supervisor. There's contact information on Carmen. There's a little link on the front page of Carmen on getting help and information on how to contact the lab supervisors. They have an email like lab supervisors, like something like that, Chem 1210 lab supervisors or whatever. Look for that email, use that one. Try to email directly to that uh, lab supervisor email because it will send the email out to a bunch of people and the first one available can get to your question more quickly than if you just emailed one other, you know, the actual lab supervisor for our class. Um, so if you miss recitation, I'm still trying to figure out what we can do for this week, if anything, but you do get your two lowest scores dropped at minimum. So everyone gets two allowed absences for any reason. We tend to not worry about excused absence. So if you have an excused absence, it's just one of the drops. And again, if you miss recitation, I'll have some information next week if we're able to uh, excuse that or if you have to use one of the two drops. So I'll let you know as soon as I know. If you miss lab recitation, again, see the syllabus. 
recitation, you get the two drops out of the 12 graded sessions. Uh, lecture is in person. There might be a live Zoom feed that gets going. Um, I highly recommend you attend in person. The live feed might be good if you're maybe an athlete and you're traveling and you want to attend live. Um, but for the most part, if you're going to miss lecture, you know, the videos will be available. You can watch those. But if you can just, you know, get yourself up and going uh, here every morning, I think you'll uh, benefit most by being here in person. I give lots of opportunities in lecture for you guys to kind of compare notes and, and talk with your neighbors. I think that's one of the best parts of being in a room like this is actually having access to all of your classmates and being able to bounce some ideas off each other. Lectures will generally be recorded. Obviously, there's going to be some technology issues. Um, in fact, I think the Zoom may not end up working out, and I may just keep doing it this way, which is through like an app that I record later. Nevertheless, uh, my office hours, Mondays and Fridays, 9 to 10 a.m. and 2047 slash 2060 McPherson, second floor of McPherson, north end of the building. These rooms are um, sort of adjacent to each other. One's a computer lab, one's an actual lab. Um, I'll just be in one of the two rooms. Usually the door will be propped open for whichever room I'm in. Um, so it'll be pretty self-explanatory when you get up there. No appointments needed, just head on over if you have any questions. We can go through homework problems. We can you know, answer questions about lecture or the content, um, recitation questions, things like that. Lab questions, again, uh, there's actually a learning resource center. There's a page for this. I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. But there's a resource center you can go to from, I believe it's open 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday to Friday. That's where all of our TAs hold their office hours. My best recommendation for most people, if you have a quick lab question and you want to get help in person, uh, just head over to that tutor room, especially like if you have a question right after class about, you know, I'm getting a lot of questions about smart, smart worksheets. I don't set those up, so I can't really help you through those but the lab TAs over in the Learning Resource Center might be the easiest uh, place to go to with those type of questions. I'll be available Wednesdays, 1.30 to 2.30 in the same location. Um, available right after class, if you have questions, just head on up to the lecture stand. If you know questions you know, continue after our time in the room, you know we have to be out of the room by 9 or 9.05 so the next uh, instructor can get ready for their class, but we can always head into the hallway if necessary uh, for any quick questions at the end of lecture. Or again, you know, head up to my office hours if you have some more detailed questions. Um, there are exits through the room, like you can exit through the basement and head upstairs that way. Um, you can uh, head out, the, the, there's actually an exit to the right directly to outside. It helps the rooms kind of exchange students from the next class. Pretty easy. But check those out if you wish. So online homework. The uh, first online homework assignment is due this coming Monday morning, 8 a.m. Assignments due before lecture, mostly covering the previous lecture topics. Occasionally we'll, we'll get ahead, but mostly behind in our coverage. You should see some reading assignments that can help you under, you know, sort of uh, follow and understand what sections are being covered on which days of lecture. Um, th those will always be a little bit of give and take, you know, sometimes you know, might say we're going to cover through section four or something on a given day and pick up a section five the next. So sometimes you'll see us run over on sections. But um, you can see through the reading assignments, which are not for any kind of credit, but just for your own benefit. And then the pre-lecture assignments, the ones that are actually worth points. Um, you get unlimited attempts on every question, but you get 2% deducted per wrong answer. But that's if it's an open-ended question where you're like keying in a number or an answer. If it's multiple choice, then it's 5% off per attempt, which is actually pretty generous because if you think about having like five choices or four choices for a question, you know, each wrong attempt only gets you a 5% penalty. So even if you're wrong literally every time, you can still end up with most of the points. I really don't want homework to be something you stress about. I want homework to be something you can learn from and use to assess your learning. Um, I don't want you being overly concerned about doing these assignments just to pick up the points from them. And I think if you just become focused on earning the points, you may lose out on some learning opportunities available through doing the homework. So most of the online homework assignments should be fairly quick. Maybe in the 20 minute range is sort of the goal. I mentioned in class that if you are taking longer than 20 minutes or so per assignment, just let me know, especially if you're taking like an hour or two, let me know um, if you find that's the case just so I can know. But um, the uh, other thing is, if we actually do some of those readings, if we come to class, if we're prepared to do the assignment, it's going to go much more smoothly. You know, so we just want to make sure that we're, we're well prepared to treat these assignments really as more of an assessment of our learning than, um, the, than a list of problems we need to figure out. It should be a list of problems you know how to do the first time you see them for the most part. Um, and the way you can do that is by following along with the readings, follow along with the lectures, maybe skim the notes before class or detailed read after class. And then um, from there, there's these self-assessment exercises you'll see after each section in the textbook that you 
uh, hopefully we'll find helpful because most of those questions are essentially the questions that were chosen for the homework problems. So if you really want to be, you know, uh, um, if you really want to get the problems right the first time, you can add, certainly go do them in the textbook and the readings, and then when you see them in the homework, you will have already seen many of the problems. There's also some um, uh, pre exam prep questions that are at the end of each chapter, and some of those questions are also compiled into um, the homework sets. There's also a few times where I choose end of chapter problems, you know, those ones from the back of the book. And those are always problems available if you want more exercises to do. Um, I don't assign most of them, so most of those problems are available if you wish to do more problems. The, uh, like I think every other question is answered in the back of the book too, in the M matter of the e-text. So most assignments, again, hopefully aren't taking you too long. Follow the My Love and Mastering link to set this access up. Again, following the access code from that file um, in the uh, start of term tasks section of Carmen. If you have problems getting your um, access code set up, there's Tech TA office hours, there's a help file in that area in that start of term tasks section of Carmen. Uh, how should you study? The best thing you can do is staying caught up with each lecture. This may be you know, hard to do um, if we fall off track, but easier to do if we can just manage to stay on track. So the more we can do lecture by lecture, week by week, will help us save a lot of time that we're not having to spend a whole lot of time cramming when it comes time to the uh, midterms. And even then, if we do have to resort to cramming before a midterm, that doesn't always lead to good long-term learning. So usually whenever we have like the final exam, which is cumulative roll around, we have to do a lot of relearning if that was our learning strategy. So let's try to stay caught up with lecture. Let's use and follow those reading assignments. As you read, you'll find the self-assessment and exam prep questions. Those might be among the best problems to do as you're reading and participating in lecture on a like day-by-day -day basis. Um, the, uh, after reading and watching lecture, you might attempt the pre-lecture assignment uh, before the next lecture. Um, there are daily quizzes that you can use for practice. These aren't required for credit, but they're assessment quizzes. You know, They're just designed to give you some feedback that you can see, are you most of the time answering these questions right the first time? And really, are they putting you in exam mode? So if we get a lot of practice of, okay, we have a like five or 10 question, multiple choice, or mostly multiple choice quiz, can we just take it relatively quickly without using our notes, without using the internet, and just use our knowledge and continue building our ability to understand the knowledge and apply it? And then just repeat the study cycle. Um, I had mentioned in class, and I didn't exactly spell it out on the slide here, you might do like a quick skim of the covered sections before class, like next Monday's lecture will be you know, predominantly the rest of chapter one, so sections 1.5 through 1.7. So you might take a quick skim, look at the vocabulary words, look at some of the figures, look at some of the uh, pictures, and just get a sense of, you know, what's to come. So you can sort of plant the seeds for, you know, we're gonna be learning about units, SI units, volume, uh, you know, conversions, significant figures, etc. And then maybe after class, you do a more detailed read. And I think, you know, the harder you found lecture to be, the more detailed that read becomes, you know? So like, if you really understood lecture and you're doing the problems, maybe you take a practice quiz and you did well, you were able to do the pre-lecture assignment without looking any of the questions up, maybe then, yeah, that's a sign you probably didn't need to do a whole lot of reading. But if there's a time when you get to the uh, pre-lecture assignment and you're stuck and you're stuck in the next question and you're having to look everything up, hey, let's go back and you know maybe read through the covered sections that those problems are coming from and revisit them and hopefully find that they're much easier to do. This book here is great for those who want to make learning a part of their life, which is probably most of you guys. So check out this book, Make It Stick, The Science of Successful Learning. It's a book written about really repetitive practice being an important component of learning just about any skill it is that you're trying to learn. Um, and it's really written from um, the perspective of scientists and pre-med uh, students. So there's a lot of examples of students either in med school or trying to get to med school. Um, and it's also written from a um, highly research-oriented perspective. So there's a lot of examples from the literature that they're drawing on to make their conclusions. So it's a, it's a good book that just has a lot of good science in it and good discussions, and I think will help you become a good learner if, um, if you want to check this out. So some exam info, we have three midterms, uh, three midterms, 14% each, and a final exam. Um, so the midterms are not cumulative, so meaning like midterm one, um, covers chapters one through three. This is in the syllabus if you wanna check that out. The midterm two is like four through six, midterm three is chapter seven through nine. And then we get through chapter 12 in the class, so chapters one through 12, cumulative for the final exam. So the midterms just cover the new material and the final exam though goes back to being cumulative. 
the syllabus has um, a list of calculators, dates, and times. Week five is when that first midterm is. You need an iPad for the finals, so make sure you uh, have an iPad. You can get a university one supplied to you if you don't have one. And then we have three, or excuse me, four allowed, well, three numbers of calculators, four listed uh, types. TI-30 calculators, really of any type, and then TI-83, um, and then TI-84. And then any type of the 83s and the 84s are allowed. You just need your calculator to have the TI-30 number, TI-83, or the TI-84, uh, really any variety and options of those models. I know there's a ton of other calculators that are almost the same as these, and um, this is gonna be frustrating for some if you have to go out and rebuy a calculator that you essentially already own. Uh, the TI-30s are gonna be your best bet. If you already have a graphing calculator and you don't need one of these 83s or 84s, these TI-30s are like 10 to $15. You can usually get them at Target. I'm not sure what their stock is like. Uh, Amazon's not a bad place. I've heard people getting them on Amazon for, again, 10 to 15 bucks a piece. But try to get one sooner rather than later. If you're heading out before midterm one, wouldn't surprise me if some of the stores start selling out. I know the bookstore usually has them, but usually there's a bit of a markup there. So if you can get it somewhere else, you're probably gonna find it cheaper. But um, but the TI-30s are the cheap option. Exams, uh, multiple choice. Mostly there's gonna be some key and answers, but mostly multiple choice, in-person, closed note, browser exam, um, taken on a device like an iPad uh, via Carmen. So just be prepared that you're gonna have like a real exam, you know, like you're gonna be uh, in a proctored environment. You'll take it on an iPad, but in a room with proctors on a lockdown browser mode, uh, closed note, closed book. So that just, you know, goes to show that if you use that approach for a lot of your problem solving and preparation, that will go a long way. Again, you can get a free iPad from the university for the semester that you can check out if you don't already have one. If yours is particularly old or maybe unreliable, just go ahead and get a university iPad. So lab information, um, one thing back on the uh, exam info though is um, the, um, you know, the iPad I think is going to be fully required and I know some of you may not wanna go get one, um, but we're only gonna need it for the exams. We don't need it for any other part of the class. So by week five, we just need to make sure that everyone has an iPad so we're ready to go for exams. So for the lab, make sure you check out their announcements. I, well, I've sent a few announcements already, but usually they send out announcements as well. So look for their announcements. They have a separate uh, staff, the lab supervisors and your TA who will help you uh, in lab and through the materials. So if you have questions, that's where you're gonna go uh, for help. Um, the beware that they use turn it in. And I also like to give a warning that sometimes students try to change their data when they get home because they think they collected it wrong or maybe made a mistake. Anytime you write down a number, even if you realize when you get home that you wrote down the wrong number, you gotta stick with what you wrote down. Um, if you really like meant to write down 125 grams, but you wrote down 145, for some silly reason you know that you just wrote something down wrong, contact your TA. But I'm just saying, don't try to change the data you collect just to try to reflect what you think the answer's supposed to be. Um, that's, you know, technically, you know, the fraudulent changing of data and isn't worth the, um, the effort to just try to improve your, your potential answer. And most of the time students do this, they actually make their, their answers worse or the results worse that they're trying to, um, to quote unquote fudge. So just be aware of that. Don't fall into those traps in lab. So review, uh, so I was gonna review Carmen, you know, in lecture we did this, we went to Carmen and did a bunch of stuff. So um, I was just gonna review that sort of term task section, um, the lab lecture, uh, um, a syllabus, so the, the lab has its own syllabus, the lecture has its own syllabus, we only talked about the lecture syllabus, and many of the details in the lecture syllabus are just kind of incorporated into this discussion here. I mentioned the daily quizzes and some other features that I kind of talked about earlier. So that um, additional help, the 170 Celeste um, Learning Resource Center, so this room here is in the back hallway of Celeste, it's kind of in the, the wing right behind where you guys are picking up your lab coats. Um, it's a pretty big room. Uh, you can take as many questions as you want through this room. You can see any of the TAs in the room to get help. You don't have to seek out just your own TAs. You can go get help from anybody, anytime, no appointment needed. Just walk into that room when it's open and go find a 1210 TA. Um, you might try to find a lab TA for lab questions, maybe a recitation TA for recitation questions, but you know, generally speaking, um, the room will be filled with TAs who can give you help whenever you need it. If you have study habit concerns, issues that come up throughout the semester, there's a place called the Dennis Learning Center at OSU. There's other helpful resources. There's like a resources page on Carmen 
um, if you need some links for all different kinds of ways of getting help throughout the semester if you should need any. If you're unsure about anything, I usually say try to check the syllabus. If it's lab, check the lab syllabus. If it's everything else, check the lecture syllabus. Check Carmen, look through your announcements. You can shoot us an email if you have questions further that aren't answered. Visit our office hours as well if that's more appropriate. Um, ask questions before class, after class. Just don't be afraid to ask questions, but also don't be afraid to look for solutions as well on Carmen, syllabus, announcements, etc. Uh, know that our primary mode of contacting you guys is through announcements in Carmen. Everybody in the class controls their own uh, notification settings through Carmen. So when I post an announcement, it only goes to your inbox if your settings in your account are set up such that you receive email updates when announcements are posted. By default, you should, uh, but some students go turn off a lot of their notification settings. Usually, sometimes, you know, sometimes a student gets an email, they don't like getting an email, so they go turn off all their notifications. Well, then you're not getting, like, emails whenever announcements go out so you may just go into Carmen there's a little like settings on the left side you can click and you can get in and look at what you're getting notifications for um, questions obviously you can't ask any questions um, attendance I, I don't know if I mentioned this specifically in this video yet but lecture attendance is not required as any component of the class I wish it was I wish I could give you guys some points for being here because I think it is valuable to attend lecture and why shouldn't something valuable be worth points in the course? But I think you earn your value points on exams. So anything you do that's valuable towards your learning will be reflected in your exam score. And so if you're always coming to class, if you're always assessing your learning, learning from your mistakes, pushing forward, I think you're gonna find that the exams are a piece of cake. And if we're doing a lot of learning at the last minute, you're gonna find that those exams are, are painful. So, um, and then we had asked some students where they were from. And so we obviously have a big, uh, portion of our class from Ohio. I, I would estimate probably about 75% from the hands that had gone up from Ohio. Um, we got a lot of people from near Ohio, but we got a ton of people that are from you know the West Coast, from New England, from other countries. So welcome to the class. Um, this is we also have freshman students, we have sophomores, juniors. We get students from you know every different year of college. Probably 75% freshmen. Um, 25% upper class. So we have a, a huge representative uh, representative group of students in this class, and I'm glad you're all here. Looking forward to working with you all. I'd given an introduction to myself um, in class, and I suppose I'll end with my intro. So um, as you probably have picked up, I'm Dr. Steve Croner. Um, I'm originally from the Youngstown, uh, Ohio area, uh, specifically from, from Hubbard, Ohio. Um, that's where I graduated. Came here to Ohio State, uh, went off to Cornell for grad school. Uh, been back here since 2008, um, live out in Dublin now. My guess would be probably 15 to 20% of the class is from like Dublin, Hilliard, New Albany, Upper Arlington, etc. cetera. Um, so um, wife, two kids, two brothers, sister. Um, we had you guys kind of share where you're from. Um, you know, if you are new to the class, feel free to come into lecture and just introduce yourself to your neighbors. We did this in the first day. I think it'd be kind of neat if, you know, people are new, just kind of get to know each other a little bit and where we're all from and um, maybe even where we're heading. You know, most of you guys are, you know, we did a little poll of like how many of you guys are pre-med or pre-health versus engineering just by raise of hands, but a lot of pre-health students in the room. So if you're pre-med, you're surrounded by a ton of pre-med, pre-vet, pre-dental, um, big contingent in Chem 1210, a lot of engineering students, and a lot of, you know, not a lot, maybe five to 10% biosciences, physical science students. So, um, so look forward to meeting you guys. If you can do come into office hours, usually in the first week or two, I like to ask, you know, where you guys are from, you know, what your majors are and where it is you're planning to go once you get through your days here at OSU. So welcome to the class. Hopefully this video helps you uh, get acclimated to the class if you were uh, late getting started or you, or you weren't able to attend that first lecture. All right, guys, take care, and if you watched all this, thanks for the attention. Have a great day.